Hi, this is M, and I'm going to go and do some resining now. I just got done doing a preparation video, so you might want to watch that first. You've got to prep your paper or your background surface and also the items that you're going to be uh, resining over, and in this case I'm resining over pressed flowers. So the first thing that we're going to do, since this is going to be real time and the resin takes about five minutes to uh, um, get ready to use. I'm going to do that first, then we'll start talking about different kinds of resins and and kind of do some filler discussion while we're waiting for it to dry. But the first thing, I'm going to use Little Windows. And it was the first resin that I bought when I started to do resin. And I'm going to uh, have to give you a little bit of a disclosure, bad girl I am situation here. And that this resin is old and I mean I don't know we're talking probably um, three years or more and around the same time I bought another resin although I'm go going off on the little discussion that we're gonna have so let's let's get the resin started first then then I'll go on to this little story while we wait but today I'm using little resin because I just poured some resin here a couple of weeks ago and this stuff is actually still working fine um, as far as not being real yellow or anything. And I have to say, as far as holding its ability to not turn yellow over years and years and years, well, I'm living proof that um, this stuff is pretty good. It's, it's on the expensive side. I don't mind paying up for um, a good quality resin. And uh, I'm, I have to say, I would, I'm very happy with the little windows. And having said that, let's get started uh, with the, the preparation. What you see here, it's very simple. You get your resin. In this case, we're going to use little windows. I've got a pen. I've got a toothpick. And then uh, this came with the resin, these little stir sticks. And if you don't have any, they're really good. But some sort of, I, I like the plastic just because it's not going to incorporate porous air, you know, more air, air into the uh, into the resin like a popsicle stick might do. Although if you can use a popsicle stick if that's all you have. But this is what I'm using. Little windows, you can tell by the bottle, it's a um, it's a two to one. It's going to be two parts of the resin and one part of the hardener. Now I have, uh, have done and have uh, had people talk about that you, if you, if the resin is more heated, um, that sometimes it will help uh, help release bubbles easier than uh, than others. I found little windows is pretty bubble free the way that I do it, so I don't really have a big bubble problem. So I don't really worry about it. Now you don't uh, want to do it when it's super cold outside. I wouldn't go out in my shop in a you know 50 degree day and and do resin. So resin's better. Um, done in some sort of, you know, comfortable room temperature. The other thing is that I try to use resin that doesn't stink. I've actually had some other resins, casting resins, uh, that I wasn't using for jewelry. And oh my word, it got hot and it stunk and it, uh, I've used several different kinds. Some set up really quickly. Geez, don't blink. It was already hard. And, um, and so there's a lot of different kinds of resin out there. So do some research so that you're getting the resin that you need for the, your particular project. I am standing right now, but now I'm going to sit down because when I pour the resin into this uh, glass, I didn't bring a board over here to put things on. Hold on just a second here. Let me get a piece of cardboard. It helps the camera to focus better. I'm just using this glass that's got some measurements on it. I'm only going to do a real small, small amount uh, just because we're doing a video. I'll come back and finish these paces later because we won't have enough to finish everything, I don't think. But for today, we're just going to use this. And we're gonna, I'm going to sit down because I, I get down to eye level. And I personally, and again, do some research, that I like to put the the thick end of the thin. So I'm going to start with the hardener. And I can't see what up there. I'm not looking down at the screen now to see how well you can see it. But right now I'm just eye level and I'm going to pour. And I'm pouring one line. And 
I'm having a hard time seeing. I need a better color background. I can't see. I'm going blind. <laughs> All right, so there's one line of the... Yeah, I think I'm at the line. One line of the hardener. I also always wipe everything off when I'm done. And then two parts resin. I'm being quiet because I want to see what I'm doing. <sighs> Normally I take a black marker and mark the uh, the uh, the things off on here because I'm having a heck of a time seeing. I hope I got that right. One part resin, excuse me, one part resin. It shows how incompetent I am. Ah, good thing I checked. No, I've got. I only have. I need. I need to add another part. I need to add another part. Okay, you're watching me do all my faux pas in one session. I am going to mark this because this is one, two. We need to go up to here. One, two. We need to go to that line. Now I can see it. And back to the resin. Okay. All right. Now we're going to stir it for two minutes. Look at the clock. 11:53. And I do it slowly. I don't I don't agitate it. I just I just do it slowly. Okay, so back to talking about resin. So, about the same time that I bought the Little Windows resin, because the resin that I had been using before that, um, that I had on hand, the casting resins and stuff, I wasn't intending for jewelry. I had purchased that because I was going to make my own, um, pour my own rods for shaving brushes because those of you who have watched my videos know that my main business is men's wet shaving and I also turn shaving brush handles and make shaving brushes and, and that kind of thing. And so I was buying resin because I wanted to color it and make some custom uh, rods, meaning round, like one and a half inch diameter rods, and then that way I could turn them on the lathe and make shaving brush handles with them. So that's why I bought that stuff. And that stuff, uh, and I had talked to, who did I go through? It was a big company that specializes in all kinds of um, casting resins. And I talked to a guy there one day, and he was really nice, and we had quite a, a long discussion about what I was doing and and what my goal was, and he suggested different resins, and I bought it. And, and I did I did pour some, some rods, uh, some faux ivory rods and then some clear rods to that putting color in and stuff like that But like I say that stuff was whoo it that was really something so When I got these resins the little windows and the other one I'll show you in a minute when I got both hands um, They're supposedly not really toxic. I don't, you can see I'm not wearing gloves. Now, just because I'm not wearing gloves and I don't have a real sensitivity, if, if I do get a little bit on my hands, uh, doesn't mean that you might not be affected. So, uh, as with anything, um, you know, take precautions, you know, have a good ventilation, wear gloves if you're sensitive, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm not because I, I, I don't do enough resin that I'm worried about it being hazardous to me, and I hopefully won't make a big mess. And this is supposed to be non-toxic, so that's a good thing. 
and uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not worried about it but you should take precautions uh, unique to your situation Let's see what time it is now 11:56. so it's actually been three minutes okay so after you stir it and you can see it's pretty there's not really that many bubbles in it I mean there are some bubbles but it's not frothing so I'm gonna hold this up to my eye level and make sure that it looks like everything's in there I'm gonna I'm gonna twirl it around so that the bottom of the scraper gets in the bottom and then I'm gonna scrape the sides just to make sure that's all incorporated in there bump the camera again okay now they say uh, which I do to let it rest for a little bit which we're going to do and then we'll uh, do a few more little stories here so we're going to set this to rest the other thing that I like to have handy is uh, I wear reading glasses just because of my eyesight the way that it normally is which I have reading glasses on right now and then I also these are uh, I don't know where it says but these are really powerful these are probably 2.75 or 3 or 3.25 in in the um, in the strength my reading glasses that I wear on a daily basis when I'm doing detail work are one two five so but these the and the reason that I do this is because these act as a magnifying so it's like wearing look at so you can see see through there it just acts as a magnifying glass look at how I'm focusing on this guy look at how much bigger it looks through these glasses Look at that pansy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So the point is, I use this as a magnifier because when we actually get down to, to doing the resin, uh, I'll put these on because I can see the bubbles. I figure if I can't see the bubbles per se with these glasses on, nobody with the naked eye is going to see any bubbles. So a uh, good pair of three or three, two, five glasses strictly for real close up using as a magnifying glass works excellent. So there, and all right. So the other resin, about the same time, I bought the little windows, which, like I said, my dereliction of duty here, and that it's really old, and I need to get some new resin, uh, is that I also bought ice resin, and it's probably about three years old now too, and it really turned brown, and I was kind of surprised because you know I'm not here to bash anybody's products, so please, uh, if anybody's a ice resin. Uh, aficionado here uh, forgive me but I'm just stating some facts and the fact is that this really uh, browned a lot in comparison to the little windows and so I will not use ice resin for jewelry um, and at this point I, I bought a bunch of it because again being a business when I, I buy a little one you can buy a lot and so I bought a bunch of this, and so I still have some more of these containers on hand. So what I'm going to do with it, and if you want to excuse me for just a second while I run and get something to show and tell, what I'm doing with it, because I don't care if, um, I don't care if this is, uh, it stuff's amber color, but what I'm doing with it is I am making, um, I've got molds and stuff. I'm sure a lot of you probably have. Let me set this down somewhere. I'm sure a lot of you have molds around. You know, and then I'm just uh, um, making them, and then I can paint them. You can use uh, alcohol ink or um, acrylics or, I don't know, gilding. There's just so many things that you can do, and so I, I'm doing that, I, and then I'm doing some uh, some of those frames, and I'm gonna maybe gild some frames and stuff to put flowers in, use them for pressed flowers on multimedia projects, or magnets, or 
you know, any number of things you can do with these. So I'm, I'm making frames. And then I've got some uh, candy, or I don't know if they're candy molds or cake molds or what, that have patterns, and I'm, I'm pouring textures, just random textures to use. So that's what I'm doing with, with this uh, leftover resin that I don't, I don't care if it, it's off color because it's still usable. There's nothing wrong with it as far as using it. It mixes fine, it pours fine, it's just the color is off. Um, here's another, here's, uh, you can probably tell which one is the ice resin, it's this brownish one. Whereas the little window is, uh, and again, like I said, this is about three or four years old. So I'm just, I'm really impressed with the little windows. Now, the other one that I'm seeing a lot of, uh, getting a lot of notoriety out there these days is called Art Resin. And I saw a video where they were showing a company that actually tested their resin, and it's a big uh, thing about, about their resin not you know, turning yellow very fast and different kinds of resin and how fast different kinds of resins turn yellow. It was an interesting video. And then I watched some of the art resin uh, video and I noticed more and more people are starting to use art resin. And I think I'll give that a try next uh, because it's reputed not to, um, not to turn yellow very much or very fast. Or, uh, so I probably would say at this point based on what little I know, and again, I think I said in the last video, and I'll say it again, I am no resin expert. I am still learning, and I, I hopefully you'll learn from my mistakes because I'm making plenty of them. But I would put at the top of my personal resin list for jewelry or anything that I consider important to be either little windows or ice resin, but just realize you're going to pay up for it. Um, there's going to be no getting around it. Now, having said that, I'm going to sit back down again, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing because... I'm not looking at my screen. Lots of paper towels are, and I'm going to take, and there's a few bubbles now that have risen to the top, and I'm going to scoop them off first. Uh, why, why leave them in there? So I'm just going to scoop them off on this paper towel. That way I don't have to deal with them in the jewelry or in the panels or whatever you call these things that I'm doing. Okay, now, set this aside so I don't get it on me. Um, I'm going to put on my other glasses and we'll resin a few pieces. So really the, the mixing is simple, it just takes a few minutes and now I can see what these three whatever these strength glasses are but boy it really makes a difference all right the ones I definitely want to get done today and I'm going to start in the the back oh let me talk for a minute about what this is this I got this at little windows these are uh, silicone pads with these little these little rubber um, pointy things and it just, it's just perfect for holding holding these up high enough, and when the resin, if the resin does fall over, it, it goes down into these grooves and then it just picks right off. And the other thing that I got at Lentil Windows is um, this guy. And it's got little prickly things on there. This looks more uh, like some sort of plastic or acrylic thing. Um, and it works well too, and I like them both. It's just that I, I will usually always use this one first. So the first thing, and once I pour the resin on, you can't move them. So the, the first thing I'm going to do, and it doesn't take much, and hopefully you can, you can see, let me, let me get around this, let me move some stuff out of the way. All right. It doesn't take much. Drip, drip, drip. And then I'll do probably one more drip. And now I'm going to move it around from the center out. It looks like I need a couple more drips. Drip. It's a, it's a balancing act between 
so much that it breaks the I don't know what the professional word is where it it won't roll off the edge you don't want so much that it it breaks that um, oh there's a word for it that's not coming to my mind right now so now I'm getting down eye level real low to make sure that I, I I've domed it enough that nothing's going to protrude out later and now I'm going around and I'm looking at the edges Okay, and I don't even see any air bubbles. That's beautiful. Okay, so now we'll do this one. Drip, drip, drip. drip. See, if you're just really careful with it, you just don't get many bubbles. All right, now I'm going to start smoothing it out a little bit. I like to have a, you know, a decent dome, but I don't want it, I don't, it doesn't, I don't need to overdo it. And, of course, with the cost of ribbon, you don't need to overdo it cost-wise either. You want enough that it, it makes a nice dome and covers everything. Although I did show you in the last video that every once in a while I don't get enough, and then I, I kick myself for it. But, uh. So right now I'm just trying to get it to the edge and then judge whether or not I need to add some more. And I'm not scraping the flowers as I'm moving it out. I'm, it's a feather light touch. And I think we can do maybe another drop. And now I don't want to put any more on. I, I feel like I'm get starting might get too much if I do any more. Now I'm going to go around the edge and I'm just going to And what I like about this resin, opposed to um, some videos I watch for the kind of resin that you put under the uh, the ultraviolet light, which I thought about trying that, but the thing that stopped me from doing that is it pulled away from the edges. At least that's what they were saying. And I, I, I once is enough. When I do this thing once, I mean, if I don't get enough on it, I have to do it again. It's it's kind of annoys me. So I'm not, I don't want to deal with something that pulls away from the edges real bad and then I have to go and do it again. So um, now I can see a couple little bubbles here, which no one would probably notice, but I'm going to pull. And when you see bubbles, the, I find the best technique is to pull them off to the edge and then scoop out. I don't know if you can see that. Like here I can see the bubbles. I'm going to pull them to the edge and scoop out. And, and usually it won't break the... It won't break the, um, okay, that looks good. All right, let's move on to another piece. I won't do all of these on camera. I just wanted to, here's a, this piece is a little different shape, so we'll see how this plays out. Okay, let's stop there. There's all kinds of resin videos on the internet, so um, check check videos out by other people because there's a lot of good tips. And I will come back with one third video after we do this just to show you the results of what we did because I want to see if this uh, layer of... Um, Matte Mod Podge over the clay, these are clay pieces, and then uh, then the Matte Mod Podge to glue the flowers down, coupled with an overcoat of the future floor wax, um, is enough to keep things from vintaging out. And I'm hoping so. I'll do one more small little... Okay, and then we'll do a, ti we'll do a tile. Where's our smallest tile? Let's do a tile. Okay. This is like, again, this is chip, this is a real heavy 
gauge chipboard. I've got some thin chipboard stuff and then this heavy gauge chipboard. And I want to see how... Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Wow. I have to say, I just love this. If you watched the last video, I talked about what this is. This was um, jelly-plated distress oxide ink, Tim Holtz. And then I, I did seal it because it is water-activated um, with uh, matte Mod Podge, which didn't make it run. I mean, it, it sealed fine. And then I... Uh, put the flowers on with matte Mod Podge and then the pour wax over the top. And I'm hoping that that, I finally found uh, a procedure that I can remember that will work. And I did, when I was sealing these tile things, I did dab sealant on the edges, on, the, on the, these sides. And then you can see where I also put some black. I think that stays on ink. For the black on there. I'm pretty sure I did that. Just so I didn't wouldn't get any wicking up underneath there, hopefully. Okay, that looks pretty do I don't those look really nice. Okay, I don't know as I need to bore you with any more of this stuff. You get the idea. So the only thing is, after you get done resining these things, is you're going to want to put uh, you're going to want to put some sort of dome on the top. And I'll try to bring these up enough to see if if, uh, if you can see with the resin on there. I don't have my right glasses on. I can't I can't tell if this is focusing or not. But hopefully you can see the ones that were resined versus, like that one's not resined, but those are, these are. Okay, so I'm going to finish using the resin up that I did, and then I'm going to put a cover on top, and then I will leave them until uh, tomorrow to cure, and then uh, I'll come back and we'll inspect what they turned out like and then if there's any further comments we'll talk about that and if anybody's watching these videos and about resin and has a question that I didn't think to talk about uh, make a comment and I will address them in the final final round of resin so thanks again for tuning in and you have a wonderful day